Now next planet is Uranus. So let's talk about Uranus now. It's Uranus. Now in Hindi, Uranus is known as Arun. It is known as Arun. So let's write over here Arun. Now this uh, planet is almost, you know, we can say that this one is the second last planet. So the distance from the sun is very, very, uh, like it's very uh, distance is more. That means it is one of the farthest planet from the sun. So it is one of the farthest planet distance from the sun is more. Distance from the sun is more. Distance from the sun is more and now what will be the consequences of this when the distance from the sun is more definitely the amount of heat which will reach uh, reach, uh, reach which will reach the surface of the uh, Uranus will be very less and definitely this planet will be the cooler one it will be the the surface will be the, the temperature will be very low so when the distance from the sun is more what will happen heat will be less now we can say it is a cold uh, planet so it is a cold planet the surface uh, uh, the temperature is very very less now we know that there is no atmosphere there is no water there is no life i'll write all this first no atmosphere no water, no life, but as we say that on the surface of the earth life is there, but when we say that life is there, so there are various reasons for the presence of the life on the surface of the earth, presence of gases, presence of atmosphere, presence of water, presence of carbon dioxide. But one is also that the distance from the sun is very very appropriate. It is neither very high or no, nor very, uh, very less. That means the distance from the uh, the distance of what the distance between the earth and sun is very very appropriate. So the heat which is uh, you know coming to the surface of the earth is uh, useful for us. It's uh, bearable. But when we talk about the Uranus, this, these uh, Uranus and Neptune, these planets are very very cold planets and why these planets are very cold because their distance from the sun is very high. So I can write that this one is, this planet is one of the farthest planet because uh, this is second last planet. Now. Uh, as it is, uh, I am saying that distance is uh, more, definitely from the earth also distance is more. So it cannot be seen with the naked eyes, it can be seen with the help of the telescope, can be seen with the help of telescope. can be seen with the help of the telescope. Now when we talk about the uh, this one uh, atmosphere these are the very common points. So next common point is what the presence of the moon. So how many moon does it has? It has got 27 moons. So 27 moons are present on the surface uh, like uh, uh, it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Uranus has got 27 natural moons. Now when we were talking about the Saturn we were discussing we discussed that the presence of rings is very special characteristic of Saturn. It's very peculiar characteristic but even uh, Uranus has got rings. So the rings are present. Rings are present. Now uh, this one is also a big planet, it is a giant planet I can write over here. This one is also a giant planet, uh, very big planet, huge planet. 
and uh, it, this one is also heavier than this uh, like you know earth it is 15 times heavier it is 15 times heavier than the earth 15 times heavier than earth so even this planet is very very heavy now you know when it uh, rotates it rotates in such a way like you know the the axis is totally tilted so when it rotates it seems that it is uh, doing somersault you know it's uh, rotating it seems that so the axis uh, the it has got very tilted axis of rotation has tilted axis of rotation it has got tilted axis of rotation and again the surface what does the surface of the Uranus has again the presence of hydrogen and helium like the hydrogen and helium is present hydrogen and helium is present when we talk about the rings again how the rings uh, or rings are made up of what again the rings are made up of the dust particles the uh, ice particles and the gases so all these are present on the uh, or we can say that all this uh, makes the rings so what all are the peculiar you know one very uh, important characteristic is also that uh, it can be uh, when it is seen when uh, when it is observed when it is seen with the help of the telescope it appears as a green spot it can be seen as a green spot or green planet green color so this appears as a green planet and uh, as we know this one this is one of the farthest one of the I am saying not the farthest one but one of the farthest planet from the sun so the distance between the sun and the this planet is very high so definitely this planet will be very very cold the temperature will be very less on the surface of the Uranus in Hindi this one is known as Arun and it is also heavier uh, it is heavier than uh, the uh, earth it has got 27 moons and uh, it is also a huge planet it is 15 times heavier than earth the axis is totally tilted so when it rotates it seems that it's doing somersault and it's totally you know rotating uh, and again the presence of hydrogen and helium this is again a very you know uh, these two three features are very common in the last two three uh, uh, planets like the presence of the rings the presence of the hydrogen and helium and uh, when we say when we talk about the common in all so no atmosphere no life no water all these are very very common among all the planets except the earth now we'll talk about the last planet uh, eighth planet and that is neptune and neptune is known as varun in hindi arun and varun okay so in roman mythology this one is also considered as god and uh, no this one is known as the sea god neptune is considered in roman mythology romans consider as sea god romans consider neptune as sea god now it is uh, it can be uh, seen obviously with the help of the telescope as it is the farthest planet so this one is the farthest planet now it is the coldest one or the coolest one it is the coolest planet or it is coldest one it is cool, coolest planet ok so temperature is obviously very less temperature is very less we all know 
no atmosphere no life no water now it can be seen as a blue spot it can be seen as a blue spot blue spot in the southern hemisphere where it's in in the southern hemisphere and probably this blue color is because of the presence of the methane so this is uh, recognized as a blue spot in the southern hemisphere and this uh, blue spot is uh, uh, because of the presence of the methane on the surface of the uh, neptune now this is considered as the sea god of romans like roman consider it as a sea god and this one is also uh, heavier or uh, i should uh, write that uh, how many times is it heavier so it is four times heavier four times heavier than earth it is four times heavier than earth and definitely this one is also a big planet isn't it so it is also a huge planet now a uh, moon is left so it has also got moons and 13 moons are there it has got 13 moons so what all are the characteristics of the neptune neptune is known as varun in hindi and this one is uh, neptune is considered as the sea god uh, roman in roman mythology and it is the coolest one uh, because the distance is very very high it is the farthest planet uh, the distance between the sun and the uh, neptune is very high so and this is the last planet so the distance is very high and so this one is the coolest planet it is a farthest planet it is one of the big planet and it is heavier than the earth it is four times heavier than the earth it is huge planet can be recognized as the blue spot in the southern hemisphere and probably this blue color is due to the presence of the methane obviously the surface is covered by the dense gas like uh, thick clouds of the gases and again the presence of the gases like hydrogen helium is uh, you know as it was present in a few other planets also so uh, it has got 13 uh, moons also so uh, this is all about the arun and varun or i can say uranus and neptune few points are again very common no atmosphere no water no life children any planet comes in exam and if you are unable to you know recall the points few points are there which you can write by your own you can uh, recall that sentence that my very elegant mother just have served us noodles and uh, by this you can understand the name the distance like which one is the first one which is the second one so first of all you can write that this one is the first uh, or second or third or sixth one then you can write this one is very common that it has got no atmosphere no water no life then you will write about the moon uh, whether it has got moon or it doesn't has uh, then the first few planets uh, they do not have moons they uh, were not they were devoid of moons they do not have moons and few last planets has got many moons uh, and the few this last ones are only the huge uh, uh, huge planets the bigger planets not huge children it's nothing like huge So it's huge planets uh, and uh, bigger planets, heavier planets. Now, uh, hydrogen, helium is also one of the common point. So, uh, whatever planet uh, you are supposed to write in the exam, and if you are not able to write, there are certain points which you can write, and it will be correct for the uh, no the basically for the last planets or the first planets, first few and the last few planets. So. please know this point now we'll talk about the other part of the solar system so as we all know that solar system consists of the sun the eight planets and certain other bodies so we'll discuss more about that please know these points now uh, 
as we know that when we talk about solar system it includes the sun which still we need to dis discuss we have not discussed the head of the solar system the head of the solar family sun but sun is there we have eight planets that we uh, we have discussed we have discussed only planets till now all eight planets we have discussed then we need to discuss few dwarf uh, planets also like uh, pluto especially because it was the part of solar system once and now it is not uh, considered as planet so definitely that we will be discussing but along with the planets there are certain along uh, certain uh, you know things certain more uh, heavenly objects which are also considered as the part of the solar system what all are the, these these are the asteroids the comets the meteors and the meteoroids so all the these are left to discuss and so we'll start with these uh, first of all we'll talk about uh, the first one which we are going to talk about is asteroids so we'll talk about asteroids now what are these asteroids actually children these asteroids are nothing but these small uh, you know when i say small it doesn't means that all these asteroids are small so now how to say how to define this asteroids so asteroids are the objects or these are made up of the metals or the rocks and they move around a fixed orbit around the sun and where these are these all these all asteroids are moving these are moving between the mars and the jupiter so how to understand the asteroids there are certain bodies there are certain objects which are made up of metals and rocks and all these are moving in their own fixed orbit around the sun but where are they moving they are moving between the mars and the jupiter actually the very broad band can be seen between this area very broad band can be seen and there are lots and lots of asteroids you know children there are around 7 uh, lakh 50000 uh, or even it can be more than that asteroids and the size when we talk about the size of the asteroids it differs you know there are certain asteroids which are of only 1 kilometer but there are certain uh, which can be of 800 kilometers so these are also known as minor planets let's also uh, you know write about this so how can we define asteroids few objects which are made up of these are made up of what children these are made up of rocks and metals and are moving in a fixed orbit around the sun that means these all are moving in a fixed orbit where around the sun but where actually between between the uh, what mars and jupiter so a big band you know a big wide band can be seen like this you know like and in this wide band many 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 asteroids are moving in a fixed orbit so wide band can be seen 
a white band can be seen now this size varies you know size uh, can be you know different asteroids are of different different sizes as just now we have discussed few are very small in size and few are very big in size so their size can be can be of 1 km to 800 km and these are also known as minor planets i will write here only known as minor planets and definitely uh, these cannot be seen by the naked eyes and that is the reason telescope see i am putting slash in between doesn't means that these are same points again i would won't be having place to write and so i'm trying to write 2 2 3 3 points all together uh, in one sentence only so i am putting slash in between that this point is over so telescope is used to see asteroids so these asteroids are the metallic and the rocky objects which revolves around the sun in a fixed definite orbit all these are moving but these are not the one which you know will be uh, over crossing or clashing or you know something like that they have their own fixed orbit and they are moving in that now uh, the size is, the size can be different and it can be very small of 1 km and can be very big uh, till 800 km and uh, definitely these are known as minor planets and you know uh, they actually form a white band as i have drawn over here they form a white band and uh, this one is present between the mars and the jupiter so these are also uh, the part of the solar system are generally known as minor planets because are very tiny when we see you know actually even earth is the you know very small part of the uh, this universe when we talk about our galaxy is just one of the galaxy we have discussed this our galaxy is known as milky way or akash ganga so our akash ganga or milky way is just a small part of big universe so just imagine about these uh, asteroids very 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 tiny uh, objects which are just moving around in their fixed orbit around the sun so this is all about the asteroids and uh, now we'll talk about the next uh, part of the solar system and so now we'll be discussing about the comets so we'll talk about comets now now what are comets uh, you know earlier actually comets uh, when the comets were seen it was considered that these comets are the sign the symbol of some mis happening some uh, you know bad fortune uh some danger some it, it is something like that which is not good uh but it's nothing like that it's uh, as normal as you know it is just a part of the solar system but you know how does it moves now see this one is the sun uh this is the sun and all the planets they have their orbits in this way but the comets are the one which has got elliptical orbit it will move in this way it moves in this way it moves in this way and uh, actually these asteroids we all can see this this one is the <laughs> and this is the suppose uh, i'm just a very very rough diagram i have drawn over here sun and the planets are moving here in this way here this one is a fixed orbit but it moves in the elliptical path so whenever they move their tail is just opposite uh, to uh, you know to when we talk about the sun the tail just 
it will it will be just in the opposite direction of the sun so it they will be moving like this and the tail will be here you are moving like this and the tail will be here so tail is always uh, in the opposite direction of the sun and this tail this uh, tail are made up of what actually tail is made up of nothing but just the gases different part dust particles are there the gases are there and all so uh, at the tail uh, become more brighter and shines when it comes when it passes near the sun so halley's comet is one comet which is very very common you know we all know this name it is in on the tip of our tongue so what we are talking about we are talking about the comets and these comets are actually uh, the uh, objects which are moving very fast with very high velocity have the uh, tail and the body the tail is always you know it's in the opposite direction of the sun tail is made up of the dust particles and the gases and it, it shines you know it becomes very bright when it passes near the sun now uh, it appears always in 76 years so i just will write the point first i'll just clean this part so comets are ball of <coughs> fire with tail yeah so we are talking about the comet i have rubbed that diagram now so how does the comets look like they look like look like look like what ball of fire ball of fire with tail it appear it has got a long uh, orbit it moves in we have seen it moves in elliptical orbit moves with high velocity always opposite to sun tail shines brightly when it passes near the sun when it passes near the sun halley's comet is one of the comet halley comet now all this like it appears uh, in 76 years and uh, first it was seen in 1986 it was seen in 1986 and it will be seen again after 76 years and when this uh, uh comets used to pass so whenever it passes uh, it uh, is taken as a misfortune or as a you know bad sign of symptom or symbol but it's nothing like that it is just a, a part of the solar system as all other uh, uh, you know all other we, we are just seeing the comets are there the asteroids are there the meteors are there the planets are there so in the same way even the comet is the part of the solar system so what all are uh, what uh, if we want to talk about the comet what is there these comets are actually the it looks like a the ball of fire which is moving with very very high velocity in the sky and it has got elliptical orbit i just now i showed that what is the elliptical orbit how does it moves and halley comet is the comet which appeared in 1986 and will appear again after 76 years and uh, when they pass uh, when they move near the sun uh, you know the tail shines brightly and tail is made up of tail is made up of 
dust particles gases i am not able to write over here so dust particles and gases forms the tail of the comets so just now we have discussed about the asteroids and the comets these two are also the part of the uh, solar system now we'll talk about the next one and this one is meteors and meteoroids now what all are these now these meteors uh, first of all i'll talk about meteors these are almost same this we'll talk about the difference also now actually meteors are also the uh, objects which are made up of rocks and uh, you know when uh, usually we say that uh, the star is falling or we have seen a falling star uh, something very bright which comes on the surface of the earth which we see and we say that you know sometimes uh, even it is told that if we ask if we want to compete our vision if we see a falling star it gets competed so all these orthodox are there so uh, it is uh, whenever we say that the falling star is there actually this one has nothing has got no connection with the star it has got no connection with the star but these are with yours but sometimes the fallen star uh, when the when when these meteors falls it is said, said that these are the falling stars or these stars are falling something like that so uh, you know what actually happens these are made up of rocks and they move in a fixed path but when they uh, get attracted due to the gravitational force of the earth they enter into the earth's atmosphere now when they enter into the earth atmosphere due to the presence of the air the friction arises you know a lot of friction arises and we all know that due to friction the air the you know it will start burning because the it will catch fire now when the fire uh, when starts burning you know when starts burning it looks it shines it becomes very really hot obviously so when it becomes very hot it will shine and this shine is taken as the falling star and it burns and it you know lot of heat is produced in this heat the uh, the whole meteor is burned or get the part get evaporated but you know sometimes when the meteors are very big when the meteors are very big so sometimes what happens you know the complete part of the meteor doesn't burns the complete part of the meteor doesn't burns now see suppose this one is a meteor what is this just it is also an object a heavenly body which is made up of the rocks and the metals the when it falls on the surface of the earth why it will fall due to the gravitational fall isn't it due to the gravitational attraction so due to gravitational force it will come on the surface of the earth due to gravitational force when it comes on the surface of the earth so what will happen it will burn lot of heat and light will be produced so this all part will burn and it will get disappear but when the meteor is big so it will burn and it will become suppose this part is left only this one is left now so this unburned part this left part okay this left part which is uh the part which is left after burning the other part got burned it got evaporated but there was there was a small part which is left so this unburned part this left part is known as meteoroid so this is the only difference between the meteors and the meteoroid that these uh, these both are actually the rocky objects which moves in their fixed path but when they enter into the surface of the you know when they enter on in the earth atmosphere why they entered due to the pull of the gra- like due to the earth's gravitational uh, force they enter in, uh, on the surface of this in the surface of the earth in the surface of the earth when they enter they come across air and lot of friction is produced when lot of friction is produced that means heat is produced so they shine they, they look very bright they start burning 
when they burn they no they get they burn and they get what the things get evaporated but after burning also there sometimes the meteors are very big and some part is left so that left part are known as meteoroids so now we'll talk about uh, we'll write meteors and meteoroids so meteors are the rocky objects moving in their moving in their fixed moving in their fixed orbit or path now sometimes what happened due to gravitational pull due to gravitational pull get attracted towards the earth and due to this what will happen due to this friction will be caused due to this friction will be caused heat will be produced it will burn and it will when it will burn the things will get evaporated but sometimes the part is left and that unlift uh, that unburned part sorry that unburned part is known as meteoroids so a uh, meteors are the rocky objects moving in the fixed orbit gravitational i'm i said that I, many a times i do not write the complete sentence just just so gravitational pull get uh, due to gravitational pull due to gravitational pull get attracted towards the earth and due to friction the heat is produced and they burn get evaporated these are meteors and unburned part unburned Art, art, meteoroids, and these are very big. These are very big. So when they come into Earth's atmosphere, they get they catches fire. They starts burning and. Oh uh, no! Uh, they burn with a streak of fire. Burn with can be seen with the streak of fire. That means what? Streak of light. And often, uh, you know, these one are say what they are called as falling star. But has got no connection with the stars. these one has got no connection with the star these are not stars so uh, just now we have discussed about the asteroids the comets and the meteors and the meteoroids so basically first of all what are asteroids they are the uh, objects made up of you uh, know rocks and metals which are moving in a fixed orbit between the you know, mars and jupiter lot many rocks are there these are also known as minor planets and they are moving in their fixed orbit and they they form a white belt between the mars and jupiter and these asteroids can be of various size obviously can be very small can be very big and known as minor planets now comets these uh, appears in the uh, sky can be seen occasionally and uh, heli comet is a one which is very famous and these comets they move uh, in an elliptical orbit they move with a very high velocity they move very uh, whenever they move the tail is in the opposite direction to the sun and the tail shines when they move because of the sunlight it shines it does particles and all this start shining 
so it becomes very bright it looks very bright uh, it was considered as, as misfortune as uh, bad luck or some mishappening or something like that but it's nothing like that now come uh, meteors and meteoroids the only difference between between the meteors and metro meteoroids are that the meteors they burn they are the smaller one but the meteoroids a uh, meteoroids are the bigger one they do not burn the uh, the after burning of meteor certain part is left this left part is known as meteoroid so uh, meteors are what these are also rocky objects which move in the fixed orbit but they when when they enter into earth's atmosphere why do they enter due to the gravitational pull of the earth they enter into the earth's atmosphere and they catch fire why because of the friction because when the air is present it comes in contact and a lot of friction is created it catches fire they start burning and so they shine and when they shine you know often it is known as the star is falling but it has got no connection with the star and uh, these uh, the, the matter get evaporated but the thing which is left behind is known as meteoroid so these all are the part of solar system please note all these points now we'll move to the next topic